Hey everybody, it's Galmadex, and welcome back to some more Magic Arena, and today I'll be playing another quick draft of the Brothers War. Without further ado, let's get into the draft. Not a huge fan of our rare here, just kind of a big dork. Does get to mill half of our opponent's library one time, but sometimes you're giving your opponent a big benefit with that in this format, with the amount of unearth running around, so not a big fan of that. These uncommons are also kind of narrow, the Prospector and the Thran Vigil. The Vanguard is pretty good for aggressive strategies, but it would tie us into two colors right off the bat. I don't think it's powerful enough to make me that interested in that, over just taking one of these great removal spells like Overwhelming Remorse or Prison Sentence, and I prefer the Overwhelming Remorse since it does just fully exile the target, gets it completely off the board, and stops any potential graveyard recursion with that exile, so... Not the most exciting pack one pick one here, but I think Overwhelming Remorse is a super reasonable card to take. And for pack one pick two, we've got several pretty great options. My favorite is probably the Scrapwork Mutt. I do love taking some great artifact creatures pretty highly since they can make it into your deck no matter what. And I really like the Unearth cards with good Enter the Battlefield effects because that makes it so if you do get that unearthed mana available later in the game, you're guaranteed to get some extra value out of these, even if the board state is completely cluttered up and it doesn't get to attack in, so big, big fan of Scrapwork Mutt with that very nice Enter the Battlefield effect. Swift Spear is probably the strongest monocolored card just for efficiency for its mana cost. This can do a lot of damage over time, but it is definitely more narrow than the just colorless Scrapwork Mutt here. Even though you want some red mana ideally to unearth this card, you can play it in your deck without access to the unearth, and you can pretty easily splash in unearth abilities in this format off of some colorless mana fixing. So I do like the Mutt over the Swift Spear, and I think those are the best cards, but Blanchwood Prowler, Penrigan Strongbow, these are pretty decent too. For pick three now... We've got another pretty great, pretty efficient removal spell and not much else, so I guess it is going to be the Excavation Explosion here. Three mana for three to any target. You can finish your opponent off with this. You can shoot them in the face. You can get a Power Stone token with this, which can ramp into your late game artifacts or help pay for abilities or get sacrificed for value. A lot of good uses for that Power Stone. And yeah, not much else in the pack. There's like a blue removal spell, but I far prefer the Excavation Explosion to that. Or there's Iker Wellspring for another just colorless card that can fit into almost any deck. Pick four now, we've got that Energy Refractor, which I'm very high on for getting off-color unearth effects. Right now, because we are a card deep into red, we don't actually have any off-color unearths. We're currently in red-black right now. And red-black is a really good spot for the Pendragon Strongbull. This can sacrifice any Power Stones, any Unearthed Creatures, for just really good value, getting a bunch of extra damage in. And there's some pretty gross things you can do with this if you find some copies of Sibling Rivalry, which lets you steal an opposing creature. So you steal their biggest artifact creature and then sacrifice it against them. So pretty big fan of the Strong Bull here. I think I'm gonna take it over the Refractor or the Bauble, but these would be really, really reasonable choices because both the Refractor and the Bauble can fit into pretty much any deck. The Bauble really can, because you just play it and sack it every time, doesn't matter what your deck's game plan is, that's always available. The Refractor, though, if we get really aggressive in red-black, we might not be that interested in it. But uh, yeah, most decks can use these two cards pretty much every time, but I think I want to try to uh, commit towards red aggro with Mutt and Excavation Explosion and Strong Brawl heading in that direction. Strong Brawl? Strong Bull. And a pretty easy pick five. Excavation Explosion, copy number two. Competing mainly with a Soul Guide Lantern, which is main deckable graveyard hate. Just another one of these colorless artifacts that cycles itself away. Perfectly reasonable pick there. Also, a Stalwart is really fun for the green decks. This is a great way to splash in all those off-color unearths. Or just actual off-color spells. For pack one, pick six, I would really... Really rather not have to try to play blue-red. Because I think blue-red is much better at being a grindy deck than an aggro deck. But 
most of the best red cards in the format are just really good aggressive cards, so I think that blue-red ends up being pretty awkward most of the time, but the Temporal Anchor is by far the strongest card in the pack. It's very slow, but once you get it out, you're basically drawing three cards a turn, because every time that you scry two with this, you can scry both to the bottom, which means that you're exiling those cards instead, and you can play any of the cards exiled with the Anchor. So you're basically drawing two cards into exile and one into your hand at the start of your turn every turn, instead of just drawing your one card, so Anchor's absolutely insane. I'm gonna take it here. I don't think there was anything else in that pack that would really work for the red-black aggro anyway, so we'll speculate on Temporal Anchor. I don't think we're gonna end up in that direction, but just in case, that could be good. Here's a Goblin Blast Runner, which is really good with enough sacrifice effects like Penrigan Strongbolt. Definitely want to draft some more cards to work with it, but if you draft around it, get this card to get the buff pretty often, then it can compete as a 1-mana 3-2 Menace, which is insane if you get that really going. Pack 1 pick 8 now. Scrapwork Rager is fine. Energy Refractor is fine. That's about it for the pack. Infantry is pretty filler for that really low toughness. The nice thing about it is in aggressive mirrors, it can trade into two of their creatures. If they're playing a bunch of 3-1s, you trade it off into a 3-1, and then the 1-1 one -one token trades off into another 3-1, which is crazy. But that's not every matchup. I think I'll take that energy refractor here, get a little open to potential splashiness later, and I will happily take another Blast Runner, try to find a bunch of sack cards. Could also just take Rock Hunter for just high power for a cheap mana cost, but we do find another sacrifice card, a Penrigan Strongbolt, pick 10, so I'll scoop that up. Nothing that I'm going to play here, so toss a raise to the ground to the sideboard, get a second energy refractor, if we need to do that, get a soul guide lantern, which can sacrifice itself to draw a card, which will trigger our blast runner, so we'll definitely main deck that with two blast runners in the deck right now. Don't think I'll be playing either of these, so I'll take the higher rarity card for collection. And see what we get in pack two. Pick one, a pretty sweet rare Visions of Phyrexia. Four mana for an enchantment. At the beginning of your upkeep, exile the top card of your library, and you can play it this turn. So it is a red card draw engine, and if you didn't play a card from exile, then during your end step, you get a tapped Power Stone token. So the turn you play this, you get a tapped Power Stone during that end step, and then on, on future turns, if you don't manage to cast whatever you exile, then you can just get more Power Stones, so it still leaves you with some stuff to sacrifice to your Strong Bowls and all that. I think it's Visions of Phyrexia here over Excavation Explosion. Seems like a pretty fun rare to play around with. For pack 2, pick 2, I do love Whirling Strike in aggressive decks, just all the abilities you want on your combat trick, First Strike and Trample to just slam on over, but there's also a Scrapwork Cohort, which is just really, really nice. And we do have the Double Energy Refractor to get that off-color Unearth going for it, so I'm going to take the Scrapwork Cohort. It just synergizes really well with Power Stones and with the Penrigan Strongbull, giving us a ton of artifacts to sack. We'll take the Cohort here. For pick three, we could take a Boulder Branch Golem because we have... Power Stones running around with Double Excavation Explosion and a Visions of Phyrexia, so we can use those Power Stones to ramp into this thing, but I could also just take Unleash Shell. I've got Double Explosion, I don't think I need to take the third removal spell that quickly and that highly. I'll actually take a Boulder Branch for the top end. Pack 2, pick 4. Pretty happy to take Yoshin Frontliner, just a 1 mana 1 1 that buffs another attacking creature every time it attacks, even if you can't unearth it, and if you can, then you get even more damage off of it later, which is beautiful. There's really nothing really competing with it, except maybe a Thraxid Demon for going pure red-black. But I think the only thing guaranteed here is that we're red, and we'll happily take a sibling rivalry to try to steal our opponent's large artifact creature, sacrifice it to our Penrigan Strongbull. Always disgusting when you get that to happen. And here's a third Strongbull, or a first go for the throat. We've got double Blast Runner and a Sibling Rivalry. We have some huge reasons to want as many Strong Bulls as we can pick up. I'm just going to take a third Strong Bull. And for pack 2, pick 7, Mask of the Jade Crafter does synergize with our double Goblin Blast Runner. And we can unearth it off of these Energy Refractors. 
to get a smaller creature later. So I'm going to take that here. Probably just like mono red splashing every color, basically. And with triple Penrigan Stromble, I'm incredibly happy to take a second sibling rivalry. And not anything super exciting here. We'll take the Gix's Caress for more Power Stones if we end up in red-black for the core of the deck. Now we'll take an Emergency Weld if that is the case. Uh, pretty much nothing here for any deck. I'll take the Power Plant Worker. And here we have a Gixian Infiltrator for the full-on Sacrifice deck. If you are sacrificing permanents all the time, then you can get the uh, Gixian Infiltrator to be pretty big. And there's a Thraxa Demon, so maybe we are. And we'll see what we find in pack number three. Alright, we got a Simeon Simulacrum, which you kind of have to take. Even if you're not in green, this is just a 3-mana 4-3. Right, just a colorless 3-mana 4-3. You'll always have the perfect mana for it. Kind of have to just take it here, which is rough for the green players in the draft pod because this is sort of a green rare, and then they're just never going to get past it because everybody's just like, well, that's a 3-mana 4-3. Yeah, I think we take that here. We could take the Bobble to go with the Double Blast Runner. Could take the Cliff Stomper if we try to get super duper duper heavy on red, but I did draft Mono Red last time we did the format. Let's not go full on with these uh, these mountains here. This is very similar to our last deck, but let's actually uh, like have a little more of our secondary colors here. So pack three, pick two. This pack looks pretty blank. The best card by far is Thopter Mechanic, but I don't think we're going in that direction. Probably just take a reconstructed Thopter, get some flying damage in, unearth it later for another couple damage. Seems fine. Now, another sibling rivalry. Just all in on sibling rivalries all day. Just hope we play against the players that are trying to slam down those 10 mana 10 tens with Trample. That would be hilarious. I could just splash in a static net off of Double Refractor. I've got some other white unearths that I want to hit as well, like Cohort and Frontliner. I'm actually going to take static net over a third sibling rivalry. Maybe we'll wheel it as well. And now we have Recruitment Officer, really good aggressive card. Maybe we just commit to red-white at the core here and take the Recruitment Officer. That actually seems kind of legit. Right, and then I can take another Blast Runner or a Whirling Strike. Look at our mana curve if I'm on red-white. Nothing at two mana, but tons of stuff at one mana and three mana. It's like we mainly need more creatures in general, but especially two drop creatures would be ideal. So I think we take the Blast Runner over the Whirling Strike. But if there were like a great two mana creature, we'd take that over the Blast Runner. Okay, pack three, pick six. There's no two mana creature. There is a third sibling rivalry. All right, you can't stop me. All the rivalries. Okay, that is not a great two-mana creature for this kind of deck. It's fine. I'd rather just have another Frontliner, I think. Just all the one-mana creatures. No creatures in this pack get a fourth Sibling Rivalry. We're just playing the Sibling Rivalry lot Lottery today. Pick nine, there's still Cliff Stomper. Okay, I guess I am going to be very close to Mono Red here off this Cliff Stomper. Because I'm looking for two mana creatures, and that's the one we find, and it wants us to play pretty much all mountains. Now, take a self-assembler, go with our power plant worker. If we draw them in the right order, that'll be really good. I'll take a forge chanter over a fifth sibling rivalry. I'm not that crazy. And I'll take a whirling strike, and we'll make some cuts, and... Should be a very simple deck today. So there's a one of Overwhelming Remorse and no black unearths. With double refractor. It's like two swamps maximum. And for white cards, there's one static net. A uh, recruitment officer, which I'd like to play on turn one. So yeah, at least four white sources. This is probably fine. 4-2-11 for the split here. 
Maybe I cut another swamp for a 12th mountain or something. That'd be fine. Could do something like that. Let's see what we're going to end up cutting out of this deck. Also, and that could affect the counts here a little bit. See how much red versus colorless versus black and white we have. Okay, we are at 18 creatures. So we can cut one or two of them. Maybe just the boulder branch. How many power stones did I end up getting? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, I'll play a seven drop. I don't know if I'm going to still be playing all eight. Oops, I don't know why I did that. There we go. But I think I can keep the uh, two five drops and a seven drop. Maybe we're low enough on sack effects to drop down to double blast runner. Yeah, realistically, it's mainly just the strong bulls here. And Unearth technically sacrifices the card at the end of the turn, but that's after Blast Runner's already gone to combat, so we'll do double Blast Runner. I have to cut eight more cards. Let's be as silly and as goofy as we can with this one. Definitely run the explosions. Right, great removal and also power stones up in these fives and the seven. Definitely have to keep the Refractors for our Unearths. Mainly just for our white cards. But helps with the black as well. Maybe gets a prototype here. Actually, Cliff Stomper is going to be real slow. If I cut on, if I cut down on any more mountains here. All right, we need four or more mountains. With 11 mountains, a little bit more than one out of four cards in our deck is a mountain. So on average, you know, one out of four times four, probably like 16 cards deep. That would be seven in the opener, plus draw nine more cards. That's very late game before this thing attacks. But it's still a 0-4 for a while. I'm just thinking, like, maybe... It's worth cutting Overwhelming Remorse because we do have to cut some non-creatures and we'll still have double Excavation Explosion, Static Net, Sibling Rivalries to steal the final blockers. Um, but then we can like bring the mountains up to like 13 and then the mana base is like simple enough. We might not need the Refractors. They'd still definitely be helpful, especially for this recruitment officer that needs the white mana. But, like, basically everything else in our deck, if we don't hit white mana, we're fine. Static Net can wait till later because it's our best late game removal spell. The one thing that makes it really awkward is a recruitment officer, but I think the card is just so good that it's still worth just trying to get pretty lucky with it. Just luck sack into the planes immediately. So, I don't know. But yeah, then we might not have to play refractors even to get more room for other cards then I get to play the static net mask of the jade crafter I guess mask of the jade crafter is basically another creature and it's a colorless creature but I would be running it without energy refractors at this point so yeah it's kind of like my 18th creature and really really gets benefits from the energy refractors so if i cut the refractors i should probably cut the mask too four more cards to cut i want to play every copy of sibling rivalry because it's funny but i don't have room that's the thing if i run all these then i cut these three cards and we're still at 41 Guess we could just go for like the blitz curve and just cut the fives and the seven and cut some lands. 
I go for the just full blitz version of this deck. Does it just look like this, I guess? Running the lantern for the uh the blast runners. I guess this works fine with the Forge Chanter too. Kinda still want to keep four planes. Yeah, I don't know. It's probably not worth going for the full sibling rivalry. Simplest things to do here would be like cut two or three of these rivalries to put another land back in, get some of the high mana value stuff back in, but this is pretty funny. This is pretty cool. Just full, low down, super hyper aggro. Try to get a lot of card draw visions of Phyrexia to keep up in the late game. I feel like this is a pretty cute place for the deck to be, so I'm going to call it a deck here. All right, here's a look at our final deck list for today. We're on a Boros Hyper Aggro deck with a super, super low curve here. We've got five one-drop aggro dorks, three two-drops, five three-drops, and one four-mana creature. And we are topping off our curve after some combat tricks and removal spells with four copies of Sibling Rivalry. So once we run out of creatures to slam on the board, we're just going to keep stealing our opponent's creatures and beating them down with them. It's a very simple game plan, very, very aggressive one, but uh, it looks pretty fun, looks pretty funny, and hopefully we'll have a good time as we head into the gameplay and see how it does. Here we are for game one with a bit of an awkward hand. There's three four drops in here and only two lands, and the only creature we have is our one two with no ways to sacrifice to buff it, so I'm actually going to take the mulligan here. I think this does look a little better, but still quite awkward. Uh, we can cycle the Soul Guide Lantern looking for a third land, so I'm going to drop the, uh, the land number three here. Static Net is a very bad draw. Thran Vigil, turn two from our opponent, so as they are unearthing stuff from the grave, they're putting plus and plus one counters on the board, which is pretty cute. Soul Guide Lantern might be pretty decent in this matchup. Um, but I might have to just sack it if I don't draw land next turn. I actually probably should have just sacked it right now for two extra damage and help guarantee land three. But let's see... Alright, yeah, I should have just cracked it. Awkward. I can Whirling Strike the Frontliner, but they already can't block it well. Yeah, no blocks. Sure, I'll get the damage in this time. See how punished we get for not sacking it last turn. Okay. Well, it would have been the same end results. We would have still cast nothing this turn, so... It was not the correct play, but it didn't change this game at all. Wow. All right. I'm running 16 lands, which is only one land different from the full 17, so this is just a bit unlucky. It definitely happens. I did scry one land to the bottom, but we had no three drops in the opening hand. We've just drawn all three and four mana cards awkwardly. We have drawn exclusively uncastable spells. Well, not true. We did draw our frontliner. That was one of our draws. Um, we let them unearth the frontliner. They're getting a plus one, plus one counter on the board and stuff, too. Let's just take three. There we go. There's a land. Now I can drop a strong bull. And if we just start hitting some lands here, we could find some lethals out of nowhere. Because we've got that sibling rivalry to steal their onulet and sack it. And stuff like that. That's pretty gross. Alright, now that I have a 2-3 on the board, the only issue with them putting a plus one, plus one counter... On something would be putting it on the onulet, which is... Line. Right, because if they unearth the frontliner and put a plus and plus one counter on the re clay revenant, that's whatever. Ooh, it's a recommission. So they get a plus and plus one on the frontliner and the onulet. All right, I can still block and kill frontliner without losing a creature. 
And we hit another land, which is nice. So I weirdly want to let them keep the Onulet, because I want to steal it with Sibling Rivalry and then sack it. So because we've got the Whirling Strike in hand, let's go to combat before we do anything else and just send in the Strongbull, because I think I'm going to run Cohort down as the blocker, where I won't need my 2-3 body on blocks. I guess Clay Rev, does that trigger it? When it leaves the graveyard. Oh, it doesn't even have to go back to the board, so that does trigger the Vigil. That's pretty cute. Alright, opponent is popping off with Thran Vigil. But again, we can clutter up the board here, and we can get a lot of damage on a future swing. Wait, did it not trigger it? Oh, during their turn, it triggers it. Okay, so it could have triggered it if they waited till their turn, I see. Alright, so they are going to jam on in here. And... I mean, no blockers up. If I just sibling rivalry whatever they play here, if they play something, then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Not going to be lethal. If I hit one more mana to sacrifice something, it's going to be 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Still not lethal. I guess we stack up the Onulet damage if they don't play another card. Rivalry on the Onulet's another 6. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Maybe fine lethal. It's 8 damage to me though, which is pretty threatening. I think we can just chomp with a Frontliner, probably. Because so I can unearth it later if I don't find the kill this turn. And that is the kill, right? Rivalry, the Onulet, we're dealing 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. That's exact lethal if they have nothing here, I believe. 1, 2, 3 by sacking this Power Stone. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10... I think this is 16 damage, actually. Indeed, it is 16 damage. All right. Some awkward mana stuff there. Partially self-imposed. I probably should have kept the land. Certainly should have sacrificed my little draw card artifact to turn sooner. Although that part didn't impact the game. But yeah, once we hit that mana, just steal their big dork and go wide... You can really just find kills out of nowhere with Sibling Rivalry, especially with Penrigan Strongbull as well. So we are going to start this draft off 1-0 as we head into Game 2. Here we are now for Game 2, and listen, I told you, four planes is all you need. Sometimes you just get that perfect one-drop turn one. The stars align, and the recruitment officer actually plays incredibly well. Pretty likely to cycle this to draw a card. With our mana on turn two. Then we've got the strong bull into rivalry play. Oh yeah, we get to steal their big golem whenever they play it. Beat them down with it. Ooh, excavation explosion if they play a good creature. And a visions of Phyrexia. Spicy stuff. Spicy draws this game. Cradle Clear Cutter is the play. We'll probably blow that up to slow our opponent down mana wise. And my Power Stone is literally just only good for sacking at this point. So I think it's probably worth getting the extra two damage immediately. Oh, we have an unblocked Strongbull. Because next turn I can Rivalry and still have Sack Fodder to the Strongbull. So if they just tap out for like a 4-4 or something, they're probably dead. Not if it gains them life. Not if it gains them life. If it gains them life, I can steal it. And hit for 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I can put them down to 4. Which is not lethal. So I think we Visions of Phyrexia then instead. Just set that up. 
and try to find lethal next turn, because next turn now we can steal it, sack a power stone to a strong bull to trigger blast runner. Yeah, there's a lot of bonus damage. Potentially. Oh, but they gained some more life here. It's only three more life. And they don't play any blockers, which is good for me. So let's do our math here. They're at 17. I'll have two power stones after I use sibling rivalry with the mana up to sack both of them. So. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. I can put them to two, but that's not dead. So let's play a scrap work mutt then. Discard this mountain and draw a card. And then play a Scrapwork Cohort? Yeah? I could still go for a two-turn kill just going for a rivalry right now just to put them to like two or something. But with Visions of Phyrexia on board, we can probably just keep jamming things out with this until we just have an absurdly wide board and win that way too. Here's the boulder branch to gain a bunch more life. Looks like we are going to be just using the uh, sibling rivalries as removal now at this point. Most likely. Steal the boulder branch, hit them with it, sack it. How does Haywire might work? Exile a non-creature artifact or enchantment, so that can kill my visions of Phyrexia. So we definitely want to attack in with everybody and incentivize them to trade the Haywire might off. So let's rivalry... 100% we rivalry the golem. Then... Sack a power stone... For the blast runner. Keep a mana up to sack their boulder branch. I'm actually gonna play the land so I can sack two things depending on what happens. We definitely attack with these, which means I think we attack with the whole board at this point. Get whatever damage we can in. Trying to force a block with that Haywire Might. Alright, cool. Haywire Might is going to trade off into the cohort. And we'll do a bunch of damage. Yeah, and then we sack the Golem. They're down to seven, but they gain two. But we sack their golem. All right. Next turn, we unearth a scrap work cohort and just sacrifice a million cards again. Battery bearer. So when they cast large mana value 6 or greater artifacts, they're drawing cards too. And other creatures can tap, but they can't really afford to tap creatures, because that'll be less blockers up for them. Alright, use the mask to get a 5-5. And let's see what we get off Visions. Visions finds a mountain, and our draw for turn is a plains. So let's turn the mountain into a power stone off the Visions. And just play this land. Go for the cohort. They're at eight here. Block the strong bull in the mutt. Take one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Looks pretty dead. Right, because they block our two biggest creatures and then die to everybody else. I believe that's the case. They definitely block strong bull. And they block the 3 1, take 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Yeah, and I just sack two artifacts and they're dead. Yeah, one blocker on Strong Bull, one blocker on Cohort is the most damage they can stop. They take six on board with the ability to shoot them for two more damage, sacking things to Strong Bull. They are very, very dead. Yep. 
So we just sack the non-attacking 1-1. One -one. Boom, that's dead on board. We can sack the cohort 2 since it's going to die anyway. And it's slightly extra dead. And we get to keep Strongbull around just in case. And we are now 2-0, and o, heading into game 3. Here we are for game 3 with another Visions of Phyrexia hand, which is very nice later in the game. I could even discard an Unearth card to the Scrapwork Mutt, which is very cute. It would curve out well. Mutt on 2, Unearth a Cohort on 3, and then play Visions on 4. I think I'm down for that jam. All right, a little bit extra mana here we didn't need, but that is fine. We're playing against a green-red deck. They do not have a turn three play. Could play a frontliner instead of the cohort. I think it's better to just play the cohort, dome them for three, still get a 1-1. One, one. I just get a 1-1 one, one instead of a 1-1 one, one that gives things plus one, plus one. Guardian Cliff Stomper. Two mountains on board. They need to find two more for that to do much. I will trade my 1 1 token for their combat trick. Or their 3 1 body, even better. It is time for Visions of Phyrexia. Time to see all of the oily goop surrounding us. Dwarven Forge Chanter. They also have three out of four mountains now, so we gotta worry about that. Okay, planes off the visions. I would rather just turn that into a power stone than play another land there, I think. Yep. Let's play some frontliners. Also play an excavation explosion. They've got something at instant speed, though, and if they trigger Prowess, then Explosion doesn't kill the Chanter anymore. So if their instant isn't, like, a combat trick here, it'd be bad for me. If their instant is a combat trick, it's kind of okay if they trade a combat trick into Explosion. I don't know. I'll just pass from here. I think I'm fine with that. Save Explosion for a potentially better target later. Infantry is an okay target. Ooh, Blast Runner's great. <laughs> we find one of our three Strong Bulls. Things are going to go crazy with this Blast Runner. And especially if they play an artifact creature of their own, then things are going to go wild with a strong bull. Probably still just grinding things out with visions of Phyrexia value. Just staring at each other. Until we find a strong bull, and then hopefully they play an artifact creature after that. We just start casting a sibling rivalry every turn. Alright, explosion on the blast runner is fine. Take my two damage from the Forge Chanter. I guess now that the Forge Chanter's gone, we've got a decent just all attack here. Well, not gone, but now that it's not blocking. Yeah, I mean, they just trade one creature into infantry and everything has unearth, so that's fine. The big concern previously was going to be that they could just kill one of my creatures for free with the Forge Chanter, but now it would be a trade to kill any of my creatures. So I think we just send in the team. Yeah, one ones are already big enough to trade into infantry. We'll just do that. Then they can't just block the uh, Mutt 
with the cliff stomper for free. Very smart from our opponent, just not blocking the frontliners at all to play around our excavation explosion. That certainly works out for them. Now I can go Blast Runner. And I could hold this mountain for Scrapwork Mutt. If I play it, though, I'll have six lands. And if I hit seven lands, so if I hit a land off of Visions of Phyrexia or off the top next turn, then I have the mana to play Rivalry and Explosion in the same turn, which is kind of a big deal. So I'm going to play the land here. To make that a possibility if we find another one. Bushwhack, just grab a land. They must have like a Boulder Branch Golem in hand then. If they're trying to find their seventh mana, if you count Power Stones, sixth if you don't. Oh, or just get the, the Cliff Stomper active. Never mind, that makes a lot of sense. Just the fourth mountain for Cliff Stomper could be a thing. Find a Forge Chanter and a land so I can go Rivalry plus Excavation Explosion this turn. Er. I need to not die on the crackback. I guess I could also unearth the Mutt and play Forge Chanter instead of casting Explosion. But I'd have to choose right now if I want to attack with the Unearthed Mutt. Sure, we'll save the Explosion for later. Let's discard the third sibling rivalry, honestly. And then let's just leave like two blockers up. Oh my god, we draw a cliff stomper. Probably just chumping with a blast runner at this point. All right, they're going to jump with their 1-1, one, one, and let's drop our own Cliff Stomper instead here. Unleash Shell, that's very bad for me, but not lethal, since we held another blocker up. They're holding a blocker up too. I think I play around giant growth here. Send in the chump. So now their only chance is if if their card in hand is a one green mana instant. So if they have exactly giant growth, then they can live. But if not, they're dead. Well, that confirms that we would have died had I uh, done the thing. Uh, but now I can just sibling rivalry that instead and kill them. Say so we win either way. Boom. All right. I was a little sketchy in the end. Very close little race there. 
but it is going to be 3-0 and for us as we head into game four. All right, here we are for game four. Our opponent is on the play. We're on the draw, hopefully drawn into some mountains for our cliff stomper to just start beating face. Got some great stuff to go alongside it. We probably played the Forge Chanter first since cliff stomper doesn't matter till we have four mountains anyway. Got a strong bowl to go with our sibling rivalry, which is always excellent. And there's mountain three. I could really spin the lottery wheel and just play Cliff Stomper here, thinking that I have a fourth mountain on top, but it's probably best to just play a three drop here. Know that we're doing something next turn, some amount of damage. Let's play the Thopter first. Get an evasive threat, so no matter what uh, ground troops they might play next turn, we're still hitting them. And we didn't find Mountain 4, but we did find a great 4-drop creature, so we're probably just casting Cohort. Alright. Have a Counterspell here or something? Alright. Yeah, just counter our card that can unearth anyway. Feels like pretty good value for me. That's a trade in my favor in terms of card economy. They spend an entire card to deal with like three-fourths of my cohort. The main portion, but I still have that on Earth. There's a dragon engine, a 1-3 flyer that can buff itself up for two mana. Let's just kill it, I think. Guess I can rivalry it with Strongbull on board later. But hopefully they play some bigger stuff for that. And this also gives me Power Stones to use on Cohort soon. Um, instead of just waiting two turns to try to kill that. Plus I trigger Prowess. Yeah, let's just try to kill it with this. See if they have a combat trick. If they do, we're trading an Explosion into their combat trick instead. But they do not. So I'll hit for four. A Horned Stone Seeker, very nice card. A little late in the game for it, doesn't matter as much now, but still very good for its cost. I can use the Cohort here and play a Cliff Stomper in the same turn. I'm going to get more value out of the Cohort if I unearth it later with a Strongbull on board. But even just attacking into these creatures is pretty good. Because it's just going to deal three to them. Because they're not going to just trade into something that's about to die anyway. So they're all the way down to seven, and we have two sibling rivalries and a strong bull in our hand for ways to really just cheat extra damage in. So I'm pretty happy with our position, but you really never know. There's a lot of crazy stuff that can happen. Plenty of very powerful cards in this set. Involuntary cooldown, that's fine. Means we won't be attacking them the normal way for the next couple turns. Okay, find a Blast Runner to go with the Strong Bull. Yeah, that seems like the play. Blast Runner and Strong Bull setting up for massive damage soon. Could even sack the Thopter to the Strong Bull just to unearth it and get an attack with it immediately. Ooh, see, there's a big, scary, crazy card. 4 3 Flyer, they cast something with mana value 4 or less from Grave, so just cool down. Tap two more creatures here. All right, that's pretty cool. Oh, it's not a flyer? Why on earth does this thing not have flying? The artwork definitely looks flying to me. Okay, so I think I can kill them. I mean, I guess they locked down the Blast Runner here. Whoa, I can definitely kill them if they do that, I think. Right, so the reason I think I can kill them is because I know I can sack the Thopter. So we just like sack the Thopter here since it's stunned basically forever anyway, to unearth it for damage. Oh, and then I draw Excavation Explosion. Well, that makes things very simple. 
then I just unearth this. They block three creatures, one of them gets through for one damage, that's three damage total, and then we shoot them for three. There is the concession from our opponent that is now four and O, oh, heading into game five. Here we are on the play for game five. I don't think it really matters the order that we play frontliner and runner. I guess if we play runner first, if they play their own one mana one one, they don't uh, trade there. But yeah, we have like no sack effects right now, so it's not like runner's going to be hitting them for three. What do I discard to the mutt? Probably static net. Yeah. I could also just not discard. Oh. Absolutely trolled. Find the uh, the planes for the white spell right after I discard the white spell. Such is the way of life. Do I want to just cash in rivalry for damage next turn? On a 1-4. They could not have played a more annoying stat line if they tried. Wow, I guess I should have just discarded a land in hindsight if I knew exactly what I was going to draw, but I think it was kind of greedy to discard a land there at the time. Because it might have just been all non lands after or something. Alright, let's cash in the frontliner. Still unearth it next turn. Unearth and rivalry next turn. Never mind. Yeah, this game might be over. We're just flooding pretty hard. Maybe I should have just discarded nothing to the mutt. But we had no white sources in hand at the time. We only have four planes in this deck. So I think it was reasonable to just like ditch the white card. Look for some more red spells. Just obviously played out really awkward to hit two planes right after discarding it. Yeah, our opponent has plenty of time to get stable and far ahead in cards here with all their two-for-ones, Scrapwork Rager, Mask, stuff like that. We're still flooding. Not ideal. Yeah, this is one of those games that is like 90% chance to lose at this point, but it's going to take like 10 turns to die. It's always a big bummer. Strongbow, one of the best draws in the deck at this point. Makes it now feel more like a 60% chance to lose, although there's the spider, it's back to 90%. Because there goes Strongbow. Didn't they mill a spider too? They did. Nice, the double spider. It's very good. And there's the Emergency Weld Spider combo. There's Visions. Our only way to even attempt to keep up with their value here. But they have the Skyfisher Spider in hand, which means they just blow it up with Skyfisher Spider. Alright, never mind. We're just completely locked out of this game regardless now. Because they're never going to cast the Spider if we don't play another threat. Because our biggest threat is like a cohort that has unearthed. Oh my god. Okay. I'll see you all for the next round at this point. Here we are for game six, Blast Runner, Strongbull, Sibling Rivalry, the Dream Trio, the Three Musketeers in the building. In turn two, I can just slam them for three because I can just Soul Guide Lantern. Looks like a great way to start a game here. Ringleaf Drum, turn one from our opponent. They're on green black. Aeronauts Wings, turn two. That is not a creature. Pretty cool with me. 
I guess even if it was, we're attacking with Menace. Green, black, white. There's a Power Stone Engineer. Put some wings on it. Tap it down to do so. Sure. There's our white source. Let's get a strong bull down and hit for one. Now we're just looking for our opponent to play some big artifact creatures late in the game, ideally. Yoshin Dissident means they are probably running a good amount of artifacts, but so are most decks. So that's to be expected. Uh, no good sibling rivalry plays here, so let's just drop the cohort. And... Pass from there. I don't hate our Goblin Blast Runner trade into the Engineer. But I like just waiting and attacking with Cohort. That should be pretty good. Alright, well. Stone Retrieval Unit to go with the uh, Dissident is pretty big here. But now we get to start doing our Sibling Rivalry nonsense. Do this. I had one more mana. Could have given the Blast Runner Menace pre-combat. I guess it's not that good to trade Blast Runner into Engineer. So we just do like this. And they just no block. Ooh, they are going to trade into Cohort. Okay. Yeah, that's a fine trade. They might have something they're trying to ramp into off the Power Stones. Mayhaps. Okay, let's sack their Retrieval Unit. Okay, next turn will be beautiful. Because then we can sack our Power Stone pre-combat. And hit them with whatever. Oh, it's an artifact as well. This is the matchup for us, my god. And they're like already dead, right? 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, yep. And that is now 5 and 1, heading into round 7. Here we are for round 7 with the Zero Creature Hand. It doesn't feel like I should keep this, but I'm tempted to because of Visions of Phyrexia, but that's it. Combat Trick with no creatures is super awkward. Sibling Rivalry without the aggressive rollout to follow through with it. I think I'm gonna mulligan here, but I was tempted. It's pretty cool. Alright, let's get rid of the Whirling Strikes this time. Keep this hand. Here's the research desk looking for a land. They do find a swamp. Means no stone seeker for them, so that's nice. Ooh, what a draw. Wow, what a rude draw. Exile their research desk and draw a card this turn. But I could just keep this around for the strong bull, which is fine. Yeah, next turn we know what we're doing no matter what. We're just going to explosion the genius before that does anything crazy. I guess it still leaves them with the power stone at this point, but they don't get to do the gigantic swings with menace and haste and all that. Gixian Infiltrator. All right, happy to have killed their sack outlet because that's double Infiltrator now. Very scary if they find things that can get sacrificed. Now we drop a Stronghold down. We can drop a Frontliner down too. Still have the Soul Guide Lantern draw card mana up. So they're a Rakdos Sacrifice deck, so I don't expect like some gigantic creature here, but... I would still love to see a gigantic artifact creature if we're lucky. Send in the clay rev. I'll take my one damage. Super suspicious, and I have plenty of life to spare if they're just tripping in for one. Excavation Explosion is the draw. 
honestly feels perfectly reasonable to me to just kill an infiltrator here. That'll open up attacks with my Strongbull. Frontliner would trade one for one into Infiltrator, but that's fine. Now Strongbull is super free to attack even without sacking an artifact. Two damage per sack here. Could do it, but I'm going to leave them around for now. The Power Stones, that is. Trench Stalker. Ooh. I could steal that and crack my Soul Guide Lantern to get the big lifelink swing. I don't know. Seems cool. Probably not the best use of my sibling rivalry, because we could wait for them to play a good artifact creature, but it's very cute. Big lifelink energy. Now I'll actually just cash in and see how much damage I can get here. Not enough, but kind of close. They're down to four. If they don't trigger their Trench Stalker's lifelink themselves, they got to get really worried about Strongbull, because we already have three artifacts to sack. Ah, One of the best bombs in the format by a mile and a half. Four five flyer with fire breathing that also blows something up when it hits the board, and we lose this one. That is the way the cookie crumbles. Yeah, this is just one of the classic like mega bombs. Just an incredibly scary creature that can end the game off of just a couple swings by itself that also comes with a removal spell attached to it. Super gross. I guess we have three outs at least if we top, top deck one of our three sibling rivalries <laughs> just kill them with their own tyrant. Yeah. Alright, that is not that. We get two blockers on the ground, die in the sky, no way to get damage in here, no way to draw a card. Alright, that'll do it. Get tyranted, nerd. We are five and two now, heading into game number eight. Here we are back again with our nonsense for game eight. Drop the frontliner down first. Nothing to sack for the blast runner for a while. And if they play like a two mana two one, I would rather trade a frontliner than a blast runner into it. And they're just gonna tap out for a rock. Just bubbles the Iker Wellspring. Now we shall drop the Dwarven Forge Chanter and poke for one. Yoshin Dissident. Feels good. We like to see that our opponent is planning on playing some amount of artifacts. And Strongbull is a phenomenal draw there, too. After seeing a Yoshin Dissident. Hit for three, drop a Strongbull. Tower Worker is an artifact. Does it tap for mana equal to its power? No, it just taps for one period. Ooh, the Simulacrum. I forgot we even had that in our deck. It's pretty good here. Um, have to be attacking with creatures with at least four power for it to matter. Do I just Simulacrum up the Strongbull? Then all my eggs are in one basket, because Strongbull's already very important. So I think I could... Let them kill the frontliner. 
right? And just put some counters on the Forge Chanter for now. Or I just buff the Simulacrum and don't attack this turn. That's also fine. You know what? Let's get greedy. I'm just going to put them on Strong Bull and try to kill our opponent real fast. Because this way I get to send Strong Bull in this turn without losing a creature. And then I get to Blast Runner post-combat and next turn try to just lethal with the sibling rivalry play on whatever big dork they cast. Right, so if if their plan isn't just like removal spell strong will here, if the plan is to play some amount of like big blockers, then this is like a potential two turn lethal. All right, another tower worker. And a mine worker, okay. So it's a really wide board state instead of a really large single creature here. But it's not removal, and we've got multiple rivalries, so we may as well use one here. I guess the problem is I don't have the mana to use a rivalry and sack something pre-combat while still sacking their creature. Unless I just sack their creature pre-combat, which I guess is fine. Yeah, you know what, actually, let's just... Take their biggest creature and sack it. To give Blast Runner the menace here. And then this is a 5-6, and they have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 power, so they can't kill it because it has 6 toughness. Buff a Blast Runner. I mean, they already can't really afford to spend two blockers on one thing. If I buff a Simulacrum, though, it still just dies to a Tower Worker. Or trades with Mine Worker. Buffing Forge Chanter change things. I guess it doesn't change things if I buff Forge Chanter or Blast Runner, so we might as well. Uh, or Simulacrum, sorry. So we might as well buff Blast Runner to get more damage in. Right, because I think they block... No, they do double block the Blast Runner. Okay, well, we kill the 2 4 then. I guess that still changed things. Because it killed the 2 4 where it wouldn't have otherwise. Alright, there's a Rust Goliath, but they're at essentially 2 life. Against my Strong Bull, that's already done on board if I just use it twice. So. I mean. Rivalry to play it extra safe in case there's a instant speed life gain spell I'm forgetting about. Ooh, Lauren's escape. Well, I've got the mana up to use Strongbull twice, so they're dead anyway. All right, and they do just accept that. So we are now six and two heading into the final battle. This is going to be the final boss. Win or lose, but since we are in a quick draft at six wins, we're guaranteed in the money no matter what. So great place to be, but let's see how things all shake out in the final battle. Here we are for the final battle with a mono red hand, just hoping they don't have removal for Cliff Stomper. If so, this hand may fall apart. But if they don't, just play one Cliff Stomper and ride it all the way to victory is the game plan. Our opponent is on blue-white with an ambush paratrooper. Turn two. It's actually spooky enough, I think I'll use a spell on it. There's no reason for them to block. There's also no reason for them not to block. So maybe. I mean, I guess the reason not to block is then I can combat trick the paratrooper if I have one, but... It's attacking with a 0-4, so it very easily is just like a send a message kind of attack. But yeah, I would rather spend the combat trick than the removal spell there. No, the prison sentence on the Cliff Stomper. And that might be horrible for me, because we don't have any other creatures. We certainly need to draw into one. And until then, we're just chilling. There's one creature, that's a thing. Let's kill the flyer. Certainly a spooky card. And play a 
Well, at least nobody has things to do at this point, it looks like. Are we just in a top deck war already? Both flooding out? No, they've got a Zephyr Sentinel still. At least. And they might have been just holding on to a counterspell or something there. Land 6 for our opponent. Land 7 for us now. I can send the Forge Chanter in. Drop a Blast Runner and pass. We've got Scrap Work Mud in here, so I'm not going to play this land just yet. In case we hit the Mutt and we want to discard a Mountain to draw a card. Land 7 for our opponent. So they've hit like every land drop this game. That means it's not like they have infinite non-creature cards over there. Recruitment Officer is an excellent draw. Could help get me out of this. They don't have a counter spell. Alright, they at least don't use it on Officer. Beautiful. Find a card. It's going to be a Yoshin Frontliner. Offer the trades here. They could have Ambush Paratrooper. That's a 1-2 with Flash. Uh, it doesn't make my blocks or my attacks any worse, I think. Just means they bounce off one of these creatures with a 1-2. Okay, that's cool. Spend a combat trick to kill the Blast Runner. You got it. It's a one for one trade. Although they are left behind with plus one plus zero. The first strike is temporary. So slightly in their favor. They get to keep a little buff on the Air Marshal. Where we keep nothing. But not like a horrific trade, in my opinion. Our opponent is just rolling in for damage here. So they are ready for the race. I mean, they deal five, then we deal five, then they deal five, then we deal five. They do win because they're attacking first. They would win that race. But sibling rivalry could win us the race if they're just straight up going for an onboard race here. Looks like the case so far. Let's see if the recruitment officer changes what I want to play at all. Oops. Nope, <laughs> that's nothing even castable. So we just drop the frontliner. All right. Now they just hold back here. We've got the static net. We have so much just extra mana sitting around, like both of us, that I don't think the fact that they have to spend mana to give Air Marshal flying makes it any worse than Zephyr Sentinel. I think the Air Marshal is actually the better creature to try to kill. Because it's just a 3-1 flyer instead of a 2-1 flyer. So I guess I'll target that and see if they have like a second Zephyr Sentinel or something. Or if we do just clear it out of here. We do just clear it out of here. I'm still going to hold on to Sibling Rivalry, but things are looking good. I should have actually played Land 4 before I did this, just in case Recruitment Officer dies. Which is why I gave it the double buff so that it doesn't trade into Sentinel on board. Um... But even better would have been playing the land so I can activate Officer. But I'll just do that post-combat. I just didn't do the math there and I was still thinking about Scrap Work Mutt. As a potential draw. Yoshin Tactician after we've already killed all the creatures. Opponent just having a really rough sequence of draws here. They hit a bunch of lands before. They found the buffer. Oh my god, these are all very good. Um... I mean, it doesn't matter. I just take Tactician and kill them. So, yeah, I'll just grab the Mutt. But yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six, like seven, eight damage this turn off the Sibling Rivalry. 
Plus we unearthed the frontliner and that's even more, it's just insane amounts of damage. I don't need to go for the overkill there, we'll just send it all in. Alright, that was a pretty lucky game for us. I think our opponent's deck was pretty good. Their draws were lackluster though, they flooded out pretty hard. They were just the nice blue-white soldiers deck, but they only got to cast like five spells, basically. Hit a chunk of lands in the middle there, where hitting Tactician earlier could have very much changed the course of that game. We just hit some more action, and they did a lot of that thanks to the Recruitment Officer. Card played very well for us, and that's going to do it. That's going to be our seventh win. That is the full maximum win run. We are seven and two, getting all the prizes we can, 950 gems, and two packs out of today's quick draft. One last look at the deck. I mean, red-based aggro, just aggro in general, pretty great in Brothers War. But there's more stuff you can do in the format. You can play those grindier, mid-ranger, like green-black sort of decks. I think green-black is like my favorite of the non-aggro decks. Kind of a lot of parallels to Wilds of Eldraine in that aspect, where a lot of the red-based aggro is my favorite stuff that I think is the most powerful. But like green-black is also incredibly good, and that is the best like non-aggro deck, as we saw today. Our first loss was just a really nice uh, green-black grindier kind of deck just taking over the game from us. So, yeah, excellent stuff overall. Pretty happy with the deck. Visions of Phyrexia was insane. That was fun to play around with. Getting the Cliff Stomper damage is always great. Frontliners pushed in a bunch of extra. And the Strong Bull quadruple sibling rivalry at the core of the deck obviously did its thing pretty often. So basically everything got to shine with the sibling rivalry deck. But that is going to end today's video. As always, I'd like to thank my patrons and YouTube members for their support, as well as you for watching the video. If you enjoyed this video and would like to see more, you can always like, comment, and subscribe to tell the YouTube algorithm to send you some more in your recommended feed. If you'd like to catch me live, you can check out the Twitch channel at the link in the description below, and if you'd like to support the channel directly, you can check out the Patreon link in the description below. But other than that, as always, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you again soon for some more Magic Arena.